All right, ready for a deep dive. Today we're tackling Epictetus, you know, the Stoic philosopher. It's kind of crazy how relevant his wisdom still is. It really is. Epictetus, he really lived it. I mean, mm -hmm. talk about tough breaks born into slavery, later exiled. But his teachings, all about inner peace, even flourishing, no matter what life throws at you. Okay, but before we go full Stoic, quick gut check for our listeners. Anyone else kind of wondering, wait, isn't that like a Roman emperor thing? Help us out. Think of it less about togas and more about taking control. It's the idea that, yeah, we can't control everything that happens to us, but we can control how we react. It's like ancient mindfulness, mm -hmm. but with, you know, a bit more backbone. And man, does that resonate these days, right? Instant outrage everywhere, news cycles going nuts. It's so easy to let all that dictate our mood. Exactly. That's where Epictetus drops this truth bomb, and it's a big one. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. He's saying, look, you're not just a leaf in the wind. You have agency. I hear that, but honestly, applying it, that's the real challenge. Like, easier said than done when your boss is yelling or your phone dies right before a date. Any Epictetus wisdom for those moments? Oh, he's gotcha. <laughs> This one's a gem. If evil be said of thee, and if it be true, correct thyself. It be a lie, laugh at it. Yeah. It's about, you know, taking that beat before reacting. Yeah. Assessing the situation. So not just knee-jerk anger or getting down on yourself, but that pause, that is this even worth my energy moment? Okay, I can see how that'd be powerful. Totally. Yeah. It's about recognizing you always have a choice in how you respond. Even if you didn't choose the situation itself, it's a freedom a lot of us don't realize we have. Okay, starting to see why these quotes have stuck around. But Epictetus wasn't just about weathering the storms, was he? He also had a lot to say about actually enjoying life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He really believed true happiness, it starts internally, mm -hmm. shaped by our choices, not by external stuff. And one thing he really stressed, the company we keep. Which brings us to, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Makes you think about who you're letting into your circle, huh? Big time, like really think about it. Are the people around you, friends, family, even the folks you follow online, are they inspiring you, pushing you to grow? Or are they, you know, kind of dragging you down with negativity? Because that stuff, it's contagious. Oh yeah, that one hits home. Isn't there that saying like, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose wisely, right? Exactly. Surround yourself with people who reflect the best version of you. And it's amazing how much easier it is to actually live that out. So true. Okay, speaking of living our best lives, this next quote feels like a good transition. The flourishing life cannot be achieved until we moderate our desires and see how superficial and fleeting they are. Hmm. Hmm. Unpack that one for us. It's a little dense. It's about recognizing that chasing those fleeting desires like the newest gadget, the perfect job, tons of likes on social media, all that, it doesn't actually lead to lasting happiness. It's about really understanding what truly fulfills us, which is often way simpler and deeper than we think. Okay, I'm with you, but I need a real world example. It's easy to say, moderate your desires, but what does that actually look like? Like, let's say, in the quest for the perfect job. It's not about settling, it's more about really questioning. What are we chasing and why? Are we after a fancy job title just for validation? Or are we looking for work that genuinely lights us up, aligns with our values, gives us a sense of purpose? It's about getting our desires in check with what actually matters long term. So less about chasing the corner office and the big paycheck and more about feeling genuinely excited about your work. I can get behind that. Exactly. It's about that sweet spot where your ambition and your values, they line up instead of constantly chasing those external things. Yeah. It's so easy to fall into that trap though, right? Like our whole culture is always saying you need this, got to be more like that. It's exhausting. It really is. And that's why Epictetus is such a breath of fresh air, honestly. He reminds us like true wealth. It's not about all that external stuff. Mic drop moment incoming. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Boom. He totally flips the script on how we think about success. It's not about getting more, more, more. It's about being content with what we've already got. Okay, I like the sound of that. But how do we actually do that? Especially when, you know, student loans are breathing down your neck or you've got a mortgage payment looming. It's gotta get real at some point. You're right. It's not about pretending those things aren't there. It's more about how can we shift our perspective a little? Like, instead of focusing on what we don't have, can we find a little gratitude for what we do? Our health, loved ones, a roof over our heads. Finding those little pockets of abundance, even when things are chaotic, right? Maybe true wealth is that first cup of coffee in the morning and someone to share it with. Exactly. It's those simple things that we tend to overlook when we're stuck in that wanting more cycle. 
Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling oddly lighter already. But Epictetus, he didn't just drop wisdom on happiness, did he? He also got into tougher stuff, like dealing with challenges, setbacks, mm -hmm. all that. Oh yeah, he was all over that. He actually believed that challenges, even the really hard ones, they have a way of showing us our true character. Which brings us to, circumstances don't make the man, they only reveal him to himself. All right, gonna need some help unpacking that one. Does that mean we're kind of stuck with whatever personality we're born with? Not at all. It's more like recognizing that going through tough times, it doesn't change who we are deep down, it just illuminates it. Think about it. Have you ever been in a super tough situation, family crisis, job loss, whatever, and surprised yourself with how strong you were or how resilient? A hundred percent. Like yeah. that time I had to move across the country with basically two suitcases and a dream. I was terrified, but I did it. Yeah. Looking back, I'm like, who was that person? There you go. That inner strength, it was always there. But that challenging situation, it brought it out, both for you and for everyone who saw you handle it. Okay, that actually feels really good, really empowering. So it's not about like wishing away challenges, but more about seeing them as chances to grow, learn more about ourselves. You got it. And it ties right into another one of his quotes that really gets me. It's about playing our given role the absolute best we can, even if we'd secretly want a different one. Okay, break that down for me. It sounds a little like we're all just stuck in some cosmic play, no say in the matter. No, not quite. It's more about acknowledging that we don't get to choose everything. Maybe not our family, our job, even our own personality sometimes. Yeah. But we can choose how we show up in those roles. So it's about finding that freedom, that agency within the things we can control, even yeah. if we can't control the whole shebang. Exactly. It's about saying, all right, this is my reality right now. Yeah. How can I rock this? Makes sense. Yeah. But there are times when that whole acceptance thing, it's a struggle. It can feel kind of passive, you know, like, shouldn't we also be trying to make things better, fighting for change? I get it. And that's why understanding what stoicism really is, it's so key. Acceptance isn't about just giving giving up and taking it. It's not about becoming complacent. It's about seeing reality for what it is so that we can then act from a place of, you know, clarity, wisdom even. So less about waving the white flag, more about picking your battles. Right. It's like instead of always swimming upstream, maybe we try, I don't know, more of a kayaking approach. Can't control the rapids, but we can learn to navigate them. I love that. That actually leads us to something really important about like actually living this stoic stuff it's not about being perfect it's about progress mm -hmm. and sometimes honestly that means getting okay with being a little uncomfortable which perfect timing as always brings us to if you want to improve be content to be thought foolish and stupid okay at the risk of proving him right you want to take <laughs> this one right it's so counterintuitive but think about it if we're always so worried about seeming smart seeming successful whatever We'll never take the risks to actually get there. We'll just stay stuck, too afraid to ask dumb questions or say, I don't know. So embracing that beginner's mindset, even if it means like totally face planting sometimes. Yes. And that's where that stoic humility comes in. Not thinking less of ourselves, just thinking of ourselves less. Knowing we're all works in progress and that's totally fine. We could all use a dose of that these days. Seriously. Especially with social media shoving everyone's highlight reel in our faces 24-7. Truth. It's about focusing on our own growth, you know? Yeah. Not comparing ourselves to everyone else. Which actually brings us to maybe my favorite Epictetus quote ever. I think it sums up his whole philosophy. Don't explain your philosophy. Mm -hmm. Embody it. Ooh, chills. That's a call to action if I've ever heard one. Not just talking the talk, but walking it. Exactly. Living our values. Making choices that line up with what we believe. Letting actions speak louder, you know? Yeah. This has been amazing, but I feel like the real work starts now, right? Like, it's not enough to just listen to a podcast and nod along. We've got to apply this stuff to our own lives, messy as they may be. 100%. And that's going to look different for everyone. The key is finding those little ways to make it work for you, one step at a time. Maybe that's a good place to leave our listeners today. Instead of bombarding you with more quotes, we want to give you something to sit with, you know? Really make this wisdom your own. Just love that. How about this final Epictetus thought to ponder? Know first who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. Wow. Okay. Talk about an invitation to do some soul searching. It's about getting clear on what really matters to us, what we stand for, and then living a life that reflects that. Yes. And that journey, figuring that out, it's lifelong. Mm -hmm. But hey. Aurelius, she ruled with grace, stoic wisdom all up in.
him in his face Kept his cool through the Roman storm With a calm that was fire Man was born to reform He said, mind your kingdom So take the throne In a peace, that's where seeds are sown uh -huh. When life's heavy, don't be rattled Keep your crew steady, never be battled in time Think that you want to get out now. This is where you like, I quit. But if you're willing to say, I'm not going to quit, I guarantee you whatever success you want to have, you're going to have it. You will not outgrind me. You won't outgrind me. You can be smarter than me, you won't outgrind me. I'll get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and do videos. I'll do a video at 3 o'clock. I'll do a video at 2 o'clock. I'll do, I'm putting out so much doggone content, they can't keep up. They smarter than me. They better than me. I, I admit, I got a GED. I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I get up and do this for Didi. I do this every day for Didi because of what Didi did for me. I do this for my kids. My daddy wasn't there. I do this for my family. You can't stop me. The reason why some of you could be stopped is you're doing it for yourself. And guess what happened when you get tired? When you grinding, and you, when, grind, when you grinding, grinding hurts. Grinding is a sacrifice. Grinding costs. When you're grinding and your body tell you you hurt, when you're doing it for you, you stop. You never, you never prepared. You never, you never prepared for worst case scenario. And the reason why ET is standing here, because I'm prepared for it. If you know anything about me, I still lay on floors. I still eat chips off the floor. I still do some stuff that to most people is crazy, like ET, why would you do that? Because I'm always prepared that we may not live in that house one day. One day something might happen and we might have to go back to that. And if I have to go back to that, it's not gonna break me. The thing we covered the most, that for a diamond to be produced, it must first go through extreme heat. Extreme heat. Forgiving people in silence and never speaking to them again is a form of self-care. Embrace judgment. No matter your outcome, you'll always be judged. So don't live to impress others. Live to impress yourself. While we wait for life, life passes. Seneca. A friend to all is a friend to none. There is no ending to true love. Leadership is about setting the example. Jocko Willink. On Providence. When you make any charge against Providence, consider and you will learn that the thing has happened according to reason. Yes, but the unjust man has the advantage. In what? In money. Yes, for he is superior to you in this, that he flatters, is free from shame, and is watchful. What is the wonder? 
but see if he has the advantage over you in being faithful, in being modest, for you will not find it to be so. But wherein you are superior, there you will find that you have the advantage. And I once said to a man who was vexed because Philostorgus was fortunate, Would you choose to lie with Sura? May it never happen, he replied, that this day should come. Why then are you vexed if he receives something in return for that which he sells? Or how can you consider him happy who acquires those things by such means as you abominate? Or what wrong does providence if he gives the better things to the better men? Is it not better to be modest than to be rich? He admitted this. Why are you vexed then, man, when you possess the better thing? Remember then always and have in readiness the truth that this is a law of nature, that the superior has an advantage over the inferior in that in which he is superior, and you will never be vexed. But my wife treats me badly. Well, if any man asks you what this is, say, my wife treats me badly. Is there then nothing more? Nothing. My father gives me nothing. But to say that this is an evil is something which must be added to it externally and falsely added. For this reason we must not get rid of poverty but of the opinion about poverty and then we shall be happy. It's between working hands and praying lips. I love what Mary McLeod Bethune said. Pray as if everything depends upon God and work as if everything depends upon you. And so when you look at yourself, look at your goals and dreams, you want to do that which comes naturally to you, something that you can do with your eyes closed. I love helping people. That's what I do. I love making you feel good. I love inspiring you. Challenge yourself. Let me share something with you. You now need it more than ever before because there are people going through tough times. We were poor, but we didn't know it. We didn't know it. Now, why do I say that you have greatness in you? Life is about evolving. See, we've been trained to do something that we were not meant to be. We've been trained for the mindset of a job, the journey of the broke. And when you retire, you retire on 40%, which wasn't enough in the first place. You are supposed to evolve. That's what life is about, evolving. I was a disc jockey. I was evolving. And there I am with my reason. What's your reasons? You got to have something that becomes your rod and staff to comfort you when the tough times come. And they're going to come. And every time life slapped me down, I tried to land on my back because I knew if I could look up, I can get up. And when I looked up, I saw a vision of my mother and I said, Mama, I'm getting back up. Mama, you will not go to a nursing home. Mama, I will take care of you. And that got me up off the canvas of life. What's your why? What is it that motivates and inspires you? If you know the why for living, you can endure almost. Why should you feel anger at the world as if the world would notice? There are only two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. I have never been hurt by what I have not said. Calvin Coolidge Learn to wing it. What God doesn't give to you, you have to go and get for yourself. Take Souls, David Goggins. In the mind that is once truly disciplined and purged, thou canst not find anything either foul or impure, or as it were fested, nothing that is either servile or affected, no partial tie, no malicious averseness, nothing obnoxious, nothing concealed. The life of such an one 
death can never surprise as imperfect as of an actor that should die before he had ended or the play itself were at an end a man might speak to prepare yourself and do the best you can take your best shot and let the chips fall where they may and so as you begin to look at people become afraid of success because they feel they're not good enough they can't handle it the responsibility is too big i've been there and when you feel that way you begin to unconsciously work against yourself to make sure that you don't get it you begin to sabotage your own potential in a variety of ways through procrastinating through not taking care of business not giving reports on time not spending your time wisely squandering your time looking at a lot of idle television or spend all your time lamenting and complaining about how bad things are using your energy negatively rather than positively complaining rather than producing that's what we do when we're afraid of really making it and when you're afraid of the unknown when you're afraid to take that leap when you're afraid to venture out there that's a real challenge you're going to die excuse me you're going to die in case you didn't understand that you can't get out of life alive so i'm saying to you you got six months to live live your life now live your dreams now start acting like this is your last day on the planet. See, if we decide that we don't need a pronouncement from some physician to say we have six months to a year to live in order to really begin to appreciate the beauty of life, in order to really to make some hard decisions in life.